Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is the panel switch, an electromechanical telephone switching machine from 1923. We've been working on this machine lately to get the sender test frame up and running, and if you're interested in that, you can click the linky up here to go check out those videos. But in this video, we're going to tackle something that some of you asked about in the comments. What is up with this weird pendulum test circuit, and how does it work? Well, let's hang out for a few minutes and talk about it. Let's start with some background. If you had a problem with your telephone in the early 20th century, you'd dial a repair service and someone at one of these desks would answer the call. This is called a local test desk and it's the 1940s equivalent of tech support that you probably have to deal with from time to time. The person sitting at this desk used these circuits to test the customer's line, and based on the results of those tests, they determined whether the issue was with the switching equipment, the line itself, or something inside the customer's home. Then, depending on the type of problem they found, they dispatch a technician to repair the issue. Assuming the problem was with your telephone, the technician dispatched to your home might need to run further tests while on site. But this is way before mobile phones and small luggable test devices, so his primary way of performing electrical tests on the phone is to call back into the CO and have one of the folks at the test desk work with him to manually test each subsystem of the telephone until the fault is located. This process might take a lot of time, both for the person sitting at the desk and the person in your home. So by the mid-1920s, automatic test circuits were devised that performed many of the tests without needing to have a human on the CO end of the line. The automatic test circuit is located here in the central office, and it can be reached by dialing a special test code or by asking one of the folks at the test desk to manually plug us into the line. In our panel switch, the automatic test code is 511, we can dial that, and the switch will connect us to the test line, which gives us a second dial tone and waits for us to select a test by dialing in a particular digit. The tests are divided into two main types, a dial speed test and a ringer test. The dial speed test does what the name says. It tests the speed of the dial. This is important because the circuits in the switching system are tuned to dials that operate within a specific speed range, usually around 10 pulses per second for subscribers' telephones or 20 pulses per second for operators' dials. If a dial was too slow or too fast, that could cause incorrect digits to be registered in the central office, which would mean that they would get a wrong number. This is especially true for subscribers that were far away from the central office, as the electrical characteristics of a long telephone line cause the dial pulses to become distorted by the time they reach the receiving circuits inside the CO. But how exactly do we measure the speed of a telephone dial? Well, in the 1920s, they didn't have computers and they didn't have quartz oscillators. This meant that the most likely way someone was going to measure the dial was with a stopwatch or a stroboscope of some kind. But this is AT&T, and sending out each of their field technicians with a stopwatch is not how they work. They have infinite money and a world-class R&D department, and they're not afraid to use it. So they invented this, a 51-type dial speed tester. It takes advantage of the fact that a pendulum of a specific length has a known period. It always takes the same amount of time to complete a swing from one end to the other. So all we have to do to test the dial is to make this pendulum start moving when we dial the number zero and then figure out how far it's moved at the moment the dial lands back at its normal position. Let's take a close look at this tester and try to understand a bit about each important component. In the middle is a pendulum that pivots on a knife edge bearing, so there's almost no friction to slow it down during its travel. In front of the pendulum is another arm that's currently still, but can be attracted to the pendulum by an electromagnet. 
It's a little easier to see if I remove the pendulum from the test unit. Here we can see the main pendulum and the arm in front of it. We can also see the electromagnet that attracts the arm to the pendulum. And finally, on the front side, the bearing that the pendulum rides on. Back in the dial speed test unit, there's also a large reset lever that's actuated by a solenoid and damped by this dash pot so that it doesn't bang the delicate tester mechanism around. This lever is used at the start of a test to reset the pendulum and its armature to the start position. We'll cover the last bits of the test unit in just a minute, but I'll also mention that there are two keys in the upper left that are used to test and adjust the dial speed tester, and a few spirit levels here and there that help the installer ensure that the tester is mounted nice and plumb. Back at the customer's telephone, the test circuit is now waiting for us to tell it what we want it to do. We access the speed test by dialing a two, three, four, or five. Each digit specifies whether we're testing a low speed or a high speed dial, and whether we would like to use more relaxed test requirements or more stringent requirements. When the dial test is started, the pendulum is moved by a reset arm to its left stop point, where it closes a set of contacts that return yet another dial tone back to our telephone. This tells the caller that the speed test is now ready and they should dial zero. When the dial is released, it starts to return to its normal position. As it does so, its contacts will break 10 times, causing 10 pulses to be sent out on the line. The first break period releases the pendulum, and for the nine subsequent break periods, the pendulum and that little arm in front continue to swing. After the dial reaches its normal position, the power to the electromagnet in the pendulum is cut off, which releases that arm that it was carrying along. The pendulum completes its swing, but the arm, now released, moves outward and falls into a channel where it makes contact with a segment of a bar here. If the dial is too slow, the arm will travel along the pendulum until it falls into one of the very farthest segments, which sends this tone back to the subscriber. If the dial's too fast, the arm will fall into one of their first bars of the range and return this tone. And if the dial is just right, the bar will fall into one of these segments here and the caller will hear this. It's not entirely inaccurate to think of this as a very weird pendulum clock. Only this pendulum only has to swing once in order to gauge the dial's speed. The entire mechanism is tuned so that the speed of the pendulum and the trajectory of that little arm will accurately return an audible tone corresponding to the speed of the dial. Along with this pendulum apparatus, there's also this circuit that functions as the dial speed tester's brains. The relays and selectors here handle administrative tasks like holding our connection, starting the proper test, and returning the correct tone depending on the position of that little pendulum arm. Okay, so you might ask, what happens if the dial isn't working? How do you access the test line or the speed test or anything? Well, there's really two options here. If anything on the customer's telephone was just obviously and completely broken, you could just give them a new telephone. If there was some other problem that kept the technician from getting connected to the dial test circuit, they could also use their butt set to dial repair service and ask the person there what for whatever they needed from them. But in general, the circuits of the dial speed test are only useful when the dial is mostly working. In reality, I don't need to use this test line that often for a couple of reasons. Number one, these phones are really quite reliable, and even the demo phones that we use constantly are still in remarkably good condition, a testament to the quality of design and manufacturing in the Bell system. Secondly, I can tell just by looking at it if the dial is too slow or too fast. And since we're so close, electrically speaking, to the central office equipment here in the museum, the tolerances for us are much higher than they would be for customers who are much farther away. Still, it's a very cool circuit, 
and an interesting part of history that we can show to our visitors. It amazes me that these engineers came up with such clever solutions to problems and managed to design them in a way that they could be manufactured, maintained, and stay in good working condition for so long. I've got to get back to work on the sender test frame project, so we'll end this video here. If there's something that I forgot to mention or questions that you have, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer. And I'll see you soon.